Is Noni Madaweke moving mad or is he misunderstood? Hmm. Yo, people, welcome back to the YouTube channel. You already know what time it is. It's time for another video. Big up your damn selves and go to make sure you smash up the lights every single damn time and subscribe if you are new. Is Noni Madaweke moving mad or is he misunderstood? Hmm. Well, I think I'll let you know when I've gone through my data, my analytics, right? Because we need to condense the conversation. There's a lot of talk in the town that he is selfish, that he should be dropped, that he's not good enough, that we should move on from him, et cetera, et cetera. And why is that? You know, when we really break it down, we need to talk about what do we want from our winger? We need to talk about Cole Palmer, his brilliance, his excellence, potentially distorting what is natural, normal youth development and improvement. Um, we need to talk about <laughs> us as a club. <laughs> uh, can we handle youth players coming in when we blow the trumpet when they perform um, in terms of we've got there ahead of the curve, we've brought in players that people didn't see um, before us. And then when we have to deal with the peaks and troughs, the ups and downs, the difficulties and the brilliance, can we actually handle it? Because it appears we may not be able to. So let's talk about Madaweke because the manager before the Nottingham Forest game said during the week, I told Noni Madaweke he scored three goals against Wolves and then he stopped scoring. That's probably what the celebration was about. So obviously he scored against Nottingham Forest. He got a goal, he got his equaliser. One of the things that we would want from our wingers is goals. One of the other things we'd want from our wingers is good decision-making, tracking back um, a relationship with the fullback, you know, our fullback at right back to defend, to double up, and also to attack his man 1v1 consistently um, and with the bravery to do so. And my concern is that with the, listen, his decision-making can improve, must improve, will improve. He's 22. But with all of the other sides of his game that I'm about to go into, that he has improved on, that he has shown green shoots in the soil, we're going to end up killing his confidence as a fan base because we're not willing or we don't want to acknowledge those improvements. We don't want to see those improvements in his game since when he first signed, which is why I'm going to point them out. And therefore, he's not going to dribble up against his fullback. Kind of like previous games, maybe West Ham, where he wasn't as, you know, gung-ho going against his fullback, which is... One of the most difficult things to do in the sport, people say score goals, make saves. One of the most difficult things to do in the sport is to have the bravery, the trickery, to go up against your fullback, a defender, and beat them 1v1 with nobody else's help. And we need to talk about that because he's always been good at that. He's always been great at that. And in this system, you don't get an overlapping fullback. You don't get uh, a 2v1. Most of the time, you're out there holding the width, being the overload, to go up against that fullback when we switch play, when we've done our chance creation on the right-hand side, you are the guy that we leave alone in the wilderness to go 1v1. And to go 1v1 takes confidence, takes a little bit of arrogance, people will think. But yeah, it does. Hazard had it, you know. All the great dribblers have a bit of arrogance. All the great dribblers have a bit of confidence. All the great dribblers, because that's when you grow up going past players, nutmegging players, leaving players for dead, you develop confidence, you develop arrogance because you're you're what most people at that age group want to be. Everybody wants to be a skiller. Everybody wants to be the person that makes a fool out of others in the playground when they go past players. That's in your DNA at that point. If you're a tricky player and you do it consistently, you go past players, it's something that, you know, you whisper about with your teammates. Look what I did to this fullback. Or the fullback has to get up after munching, munching grass on the floor and say, damn, I got embarrassed. It comes with the territory of being a winger, a tricky winger. That's that's part of it. You're not going to find a winger that goes past players that doesn't have any confidence, that doesn't have any arrogance. But he's always had that. Even when he first joined, he's always had that. But like I said, dribbling, decision making, finishing and defending for your fullback. And when you go through those things, and, and I will start with that quote that I read out, right? Maresco. During the week, I told Madaweke he scored three goals against Wolves and he stopped scoring. That's probably what his celebration is about. That tells you that Maresca is directly saying to Madaweke, you need to score goals in this team. I've got Sancho who's a chance creator. He's a one-two, he's a tip-tap, he's a combine, he's a key passer. He leads, well, he doesn't lead, but he's got eight chances created this season. Noni Madaweke has got six. He's level with Enzo Fernandez for eight. Cole Palmer's got 23. <laughs> Don't ask. <laughs> he's been asked to get goals. And this season, he's got four goals in six games in the Premier League in comparison to obviously last season where he got five goals in 23. Obviously got a hat-trick against Wolves. He showed finishing 
quality there. Let's not say that it was an easy hat trick. I've seen wingers miss those chances before, especially when they're on their weaker side on that right foot, which is something else he's improved on his weaker foot. Goal against Bournemouth last year, roofed it. Goals against Wolves, some right footers in there. So the manager's actually asking him to get goals. Now, sometimes is he going to shoot when he should have passed? Yes. Can we say your decision making needs to improve? Yes. But he's been asked to get goals. Quite clearly, the manager said, you need to be getting goals. I've got Cole Palmer. I've got Jackson, who's finishing isn't there. And I've got you. And I've Sancho, who doesn't really take shots. Madrick, no. Felix doesn't start. Neto, Neto, you know, I, I even want to see improvement in his shooting. Sometimes he scuffs his shots. He's not like a goal scoring winger just yet, but he hasn't got as many starts. So can't really judge him as much in the Premier League. But Noni Madueke has improved in his shooting. That's the first thing. He's improved in his shooting, his shot volume, his ability to get into positions, which is important to actually have those shots. He's having more shots. He's getting more goals. He's had the most touches in the opposition box in the Premier League this season. 20. More than Saka, more than Bernardo Silva, more than Sterling, more than Havertz. And that's for a team that isn't really a... Chelsea you wouldn't describe as of yet as a heavy possession-based team. The other teams that are in that, Arsenal, Cities, um, those players, yeah, they're kind of like dominating games maybe more or they, they, they're a bit more solidified in their structure and their style with their managers. Our, our team, we, we do have a bit of a back and forth still under Maresca because we're not quite there yet. But he's had the most touches in the box. So that's a compliment to him, first of all, because he's getting in the right positions. He's getting himself into the box with his dribbling or he's making sure that he's in the box to receive a progressive pass. So that's an improvement because he wasn't putting up these statistics in, in when he first joined, certainly not last season either. Otherwise, he wouldn't, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't be where he is right now with these goals. So that's an improvement, right? That's an improvement. Another improvement, defending. Noni Madueke is working his arse off. Tackles, interceptions, getting back, helping his fullback. Did it against Nottingham Forest brilliantly, right? But in a game against West Ham at the Olympic Park a couple of years ago with Emerson at the back stick scoring to make it 1-1, Noni Madueke was nowhere to be found. Noni Madueke was nowhere to be found. He actually, in this image that I have, looks at Emerson, looks back. The cross comes in, he's nowhere near him. The ball gets to Emerson. He's nowhere near him. He let him go. And I remember that day thinking, you have got a lot to learn, kid, because that's something that you cannot do at the highest level. You need to defend. You need to track your opposition fullback. You need to make sure that you're covering that off. You can't, you can't let our fullbacks go 2v1. That was a reason why he wasn't starting consistently, because he wasn't able to be relied upon defensively. But what did Moresca have to say about Madaweke recently? I said from day one, Noni Madueke is my type of winger. I really like the most important thing from Noni today was the run back to defend counter attack in the 90th minute. We can just avoid the free kick he gave away before half time. He's working hard. He's defending. He's winning tackles. One interception, three tackles against Wolves. Sorry, against Nottingham Forest, just the weekend gone. Seven out of 13 ground duels. One out of one aerial duels. The guy's working hard to get back. The guy's putting in a shift. That's not a selfish player. A player that tracks back, works hard, and sprints in the 90th minute to help his fullback is not a selfish player. A player that compliments Cole Palmer before his England um, opportunities in, in the press conferences. A player that points to Cole Palmer when he does the magical things that he does is not a selfish player. Now, last season, heavy criticism for the penalty situation with Jackson, partly I blame Pochettino for allowing youngsters to almost facilitate their own environment as to who picks what penalty they get to take because there was no designated penalty taker. Now, Moresca's made it 100% clear who the penalty taker is. He's laid down the law. He's put the instructions out. We've not had that issue this season. That is how you, you know, put youngsters in their place. That's how you teach a class. When you've got a kid at the back who's Jackson and Madaweke maybe throwing some rubbers, throwing some pencils, you say, right, separate. One sit at the front, one sit at the back, right? Development, learning, growth. Now nobody's throwing rubbers, nobody's throwing pencils. So another thing that comes from the coach, that authority, that leadership, that decision-making, crystal clear. Not you lot figure out on the pitch. So it allows for the immaturities and the, 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 the youth to, to, to kind of come to the fore at Stamford Bridge in front of our very eyes. No, no, leave that shit on the training pitch. If we're having a training match and somebody wins a penalty, then there's a bicker who gets to take the penalty. And Maresca says, blows the whistle and says, no, Cole Palmer's the penalty taker. All that argument you don't see because it's on the training pitch, but it's been sorted because there's a decision, not, not at Stamford Bridge. So that was also partly on the manager. 
So he's improved in his defending. I think everybody can admit that. He's improved in his goal scoring because the statistics literally prove that. He's improved in getting into the goal scoring positions. The touches in the penalty box literally prove that. He could not be doing any better in that regard. And he's improved in duels and, and, and all of these things, right? Against Nottingham Forest, most touches in the opposition box, most duels won, most take-ons completed, most shots, most tackles, right? A winger, 1v1, I don't even need to convince you. You know Noni Madaweke, that's his best thing. Going up against fullbacks 1v1, don't take it for granted. There's a lot of wingers that can't dribble in this modern era. There's a lot of wingers that don't know how to go up against their fullback. There's a lot of wingers that don't know how to do stepovers, don't know how to, you know, go past players and just literally kick and run. There's a lot of wingers. Lot of wingers. So now we get to the decision making. This is the last one before we wrap up. Noni against Nottingham Forest had more key passes than in any other game he's had this season. He had three, right? Usually he leaves the pitch with one or sometimes even none. But he has no assists this season. And I'm not here to tell you that you haven't seen what you've seen. His decision making does need to improve. At times he can make that pass. But there are times he has made that pass. And because it hasn't led to a goal, it would be Cole Palmer missing the opportunity or Sancho being offside, he won't get the credit for it. That's also true. But what's also important with the decision making is that when Noni is 1v1 with his fullback, when Noni does go to his right and he does do the cutback, and there's many times where Noni will put the cross in with the right foot, cutback, cutback, we don't have options in the box or Jackson, love him, doesn't have the box presence to be the figure that a winger needs to get the ball to him. He doesn't have the box movement. We know this, Jackson could improve his box movement. We know Jackson needs to be more of a presence in the box when we're going up against low blocks. We know Jackson needs to be more of a physical specimen. We don't have uh, a, someone that is necessarily a striker striker for our wingers to put chances on a plate. And we don't necessarily always put numbers into the box so there's more people to pick out. So that's also part of the decision-making. It's not just Noni isn't trying to find people. He's, he does put the ball into the box. He does cross the ball. He does do cutbacks. But we need to also acknowledge that Jackson is still developing. So when you have a developing winger and a developing striker, sometimes it doesn't match. Palmer's developing, but he's not really developing. He's just there, he's just doing his thing. But the, the other two are developing. So when they're trying to find each other, sometimes it's not gonna work because the right footed crosses from Nonny need to improve because Jackson's penalty box movement and the numbers we commit need to improve. Because sometimes Palmer's come to the halfway line to play that pass in behind, to play that fantastic Juan Mata-esque or, or Cesc Fabregas-esque pass. And then when you look at who's arriving into the box, you've got Sancho who's still out on the left wing, you've got Jackson on his own, and you've got Enzo Fernandez hovering around the edge of the area. So just picture it in your head, who's in the box? Who's in the box for Noni Madueke to look up and say, I'm not gonna have this shot, I'm gonna cross, I'm gonna find someone. Not a lot of people. When you look at the best Liverpool team that went up against City, they had numbers committed to the box. The opposing fullback, Robertson, if it was Trent, in the box. Mane, Firmino, Salah, in the box. An on-rushing midfielder, Wanyama, in the box. Five, six players in the box. Four, five players, sorry, in the box. Chelsea, no, no. One, sometimes, one player in the box. So if you're gonna sign young players, you have to, and, and, and by the way, if you're gonna sign young players, which we have directors, but as a fan, you're gonna promote that and 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 advocate that and say, look at us, we 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 are a recruitment's elite. Okay, so then you need to be able to sit back and say, is my young player improving season in season out? Noni Madaweke, one hundred and ten percent yes. Do I have the patience to see through that development without screaming sell before they turn 25, 26 and actually reach their peak and explode? If you can't do that. That's no problem. That's why I scream balance. That's why I scream, you know, apples and oranges, pears, because otherwise I want to achieve things. I want to win trophies. This potentially do, does cost us points if Noni Madaweke doesn't find the right decision in, in the right moment. But that's why I scream balance. That's why Neto's here, right? It's great. We've got Neto, so we've got balance now. So he can come in. But if you are 100%, always, always bring, bring, bring youth, you have to be able to understand development is not linear in terms of, it's not like you, you, you can't predict how sharp that development will be and what areas will develop at what time. I can sit here safely and say his shooting has improved, his tracking back for the fullback defensive work has improved and his 1v1 never needed improvement. So he's already improved two out of the four things I need from a winger and he already had one. So he's only got one thing left and that's decision making. And then if we wanna go for bonuses, we're going for right footed crosses, we're looking still at right footed shots and all those things, right? Those are like bonus perks on, on EAFC. So just think, Chelsea fans. For me, misunderstood. 
do we do not want to so i'll leave you with this last point we do not want to drain the confidence out of a player that actually needs confidence to do what they do because you're going to take away his best attribute which is his dribbling and you're going to leave him with a passive safe winger who doesn't do anything other than basic sideways backwards passes because he's too scared to do something special what environment do we want to harvest for Madaweke? Do we want him to shine and to express himself and be confident? Or do we want to shackle him and suffocate him and turn him into a bland, boring, predictable winger when we actually need our wingers to get goals? We need our wingers to contribute with the tallies and the numbers because our striker isn't a clinical finisher. Just let that, let that sit. Smash up the likes, make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. In a bit, people. Peace.